Hey guys, it's Jaden or BHA here bringing you a new video. Uh, so today we're going to look at Freegate or Frygate in VR. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, so hopefully I'm getting that correctly, not butchering it too much. So they are a open source in VR uh, that has a ton of cool features, including human and person detection, which I think is pretty awesome. Now we've looked at some of these before, uh, like Shinobi and Motion Eye and even Zoneminder. But this one, I think, may take the cake. Let's check it out. All right, so there are a ton of different ways uh, to install this open source MVR. And we're going to look at installing it in Docker. You already know how much I like using Docker and uh, trying out different Docker containers. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to get this thing set up. So there are other options as well. You can use it as a has OS add-on if you'd prefer, but I thought by installing it in Docker, it makes it more versatile for everybody. There is a Home Assistant integration as well that will help us integrate those cameras that we have built out in the NVR into Home Assistant. I'm pretty excited. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, for starters, we're gonna go over some prerequisites so we need to get everything installed. Uh, once we've done that, we are ready to install Frygate in Docker. After it's installed and up and running, then we are going to go over what config options and features you have from the web interface. And lastly, uh, we'll install the Frygate custom uh, integration for Home Assistant and show you how that works. So let's get started. So there are a ton of different configuration options available to us um, for this system that we can add into the config file. My main focus today is just to get a base config file in place so that we can get the system online. We can always go back and modify it and add stuff to it later uh, to tweak it to whatever our needs might be. Not to mention that their website is awesome. There's tons of documentation out there uh, and really goes into detail on how to set everything up and what all the various features uh, and config options there are. Uh, but basically, we're going to go ahead and create a directory here that's going to house our config file. I have all of my Docker configs for my various containers in my home directory on my Docker host machine. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, create a new folder here for Frygate. Uh, and then from there, we just want to create a file called config.yaml. And again, I'll have all this in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it. In here, we want to have our MQTT information that points to our MQTT server. Uh, but basically, we'll need the uh, MQTT server IP address here, as well as any like username and password uh, that we need to access it. Uh, underneath there, we're gonna start adding in all of our cameras. Uh, so for starters, we're just gonna add one. Uh, we will come back and add some more later maybe, but let's, uh, let's get this server online with one camera and kind of show you what all that looks like. Uh, so we'll call this one back one. That's kind of where I have it laid out uh, at my house. Now this system uses FFmpeg. Uh, let's see, under inputs, uh, this is where we're going to put that RTSP URL. So you'll need to find out what your uh, stream is for your particular camera, since pretty much all RTSP streams are different uh, for different types of cameras. Uh, but once you have that in there, uh, let's see, under roles, we're just going to put uh, RTMP. I know there are multiple config options for roles, uh, so you'll probably want to do some uh, checking in that in the documentation and kind of see what options are best for you. But again, for right now, I'm just trying to get this system up online. Uh, once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and save it. And at this point, I think we are ready to move on to the next step and we'll get Frygate installed in Docker. Okay, uh, now we are ready to get this thing installed in Docker. So we're using Portainer Stacks, uh, which of course uses Docker Compose YAML code. So if you aren't using Portainer Stacks, 
uh, but you are using Docker Compose, this will work. Uh, and I'll have all this in the description below so you can copy and paste it. But basically we are going to uh, go into our stacks here. I'm gonna choose my home automation stack. Uh, let's go ahead and click on edit here. We are looking for an open spot down here at the bottom for this container. So I'm gonna call it Frygate, and the container name will be Frygate as well. Uh, the next line is for the image name. Uh, I'm not gonna read all that out here, but I'll have it all in the description below so that you can copy and paste it. Uh, we'll set the restart to always. All right, so we're gonna add two volumes here. One is gonna be to make sure uh, that this uh, container gets local time uh, from the Docker host. And the second is gonna be the directory that we created earlier with our, our Fragate config file in it. So we'll add both of those there. Uh, and then for ports, there's gonna be two ports that we need to add. Uh, by default, uh, 5000 is what it uses for the web interface. Uh, so we'll need to add that one. And then of course we need to add 1935, uh, which the server uses for RTMP. Under environment, we have one variable. So we need to add in the Frygate RTSP password. Um, we can set this to whatever we want. I'm just gonna set mine to password uh, for now. Once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and update the stack. If all goes well, it should come online. If we click on the newly installed Frygate container here, uh, we can see everything looks good. I don't see any issues there. If we click on the logs, uh, you can see that it's online and connecting everything up. Uh, so at this point, I think we are good to go. And let's move on to the next step and we will go over the web interface. All right, so here we are in the web interface here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff you can do here, but it does have uh, a few things. So we can uh, change the uh, mode from light or dark. Um, I prefer the dark mode, but I think I'll just leave it auto for now, which is kind of the default configuration. Uh, let's see, there's a section for events. I don't currently have any since this is a new install, so... Uh, uh, nothing there yet. There's also a section for debugging. Uh, so if you're having issues with your camera stream and stuff, this is kind of where you'd go to kind of work that out. But if we go back to the main screen, we can click on the camera. It pops right up and you can see the stream looks pretty good. Everything looks good there. As it starts doing person detection and stuff like that, you'll see objects uh, show up in the view down here at the bottom. Let's see, if we click on debug over here in the corner, you can see that it has some other options there. This is where you can um, set up zones and whatnot uh, for the camera feed itself. Right now, I think I'm just gonna keep everything default. Let's go ahead and add another camera to just to kind of walk through what that might look like. Uh, so we'll need to edit our config.yaml file uh, that we set up for Frygate. So here we're just going to add in some cameras right underneath that first one. Everything's pretty much gonna be the same. Uh, we're just gonna basically modify the name and the RTSP stream. Uh, but I'm gonna be adding in my Real Link Duo here, which has two cameras on it. Therefore, we'll have two streams to add. Uh, so we're gonna add both of these right underneath here, one for the left side and one for the right side. And basically, once we get all that in there, we can uh, basically save this file and then we're gonna jump over to Portainer. We'll restart um, the container just to pick up the new config changes. And then of course, if we go back into Frygate, we should see all three camera streams now. So, uh, you know, that was actually pretty quick and painless on doing that uh, addition. Now, again, there are tons of other config options that you can add in there, even for the cameras themselves. Uh, we kept it pretty basic because we we're just trying to bring the system up online. Uh, you'll want to look at that documentation uh, and tweak uh, the config to whatever your needs might be. But everything looks good here with all three cameras uh, added. So I think we are ready to move on to that last step. We're going to get this uh, 
Home Assistant custom integration added so that we can start seeing these cameras in Home Assistant. So now we are looking at adding the Frygate custom integration into Home Assistant. Now it should be uh, simple enough, but let's see what all it will take. The easiest way to do this is uh, to use the Home Assistant Community Store. So if uh, we click on Hacks and then go to the Integration section, uh, we will hit that plus in the bottom corner and do a search for Frygate. Uh, from there, we just want to hit the install on this. It should go pretty quickly. Uh, once it's installed, we need to restart Home Assistant to pick up these changes. Uh, so we're going to basically go under Configuration and then into uh, Server Controls. And here we're going to hit Restart. And uh, we'll give it a second to come back up. Once it's back online, we just need to go into the Integrations section here and hit the plus in the bottom corner. So we'll do a search for Frygate, and then go ahead and hit the add on this as well. As you can see, it's asking for the URL to our Frygate install. So we basically just need to update that URL uh, with our correct IP address. We'll hit enter, and then it should show, and there it is, all the cameras. Uh, and even an entity for Frygate as well. So let's take a look at that and see what all we get. So of course, if you uh, click on one of the cameras here, you can see it has a camera entity as well as several sensors for monitoring the uh, frames per second, motion detection, uh, person detection. So that's pretty cool. Uh, looks like we're going to get that for each of the cameras. Uh, and if we look on the uh, Frygate entity, uh, it has some sensors for like monitoring frames per second and CPU utilization. So that's pretty cool as well. But that's pretty much it uh, as far as the integration goes for Home Assistant. Again, this is just a base install. So there's way more stuff you can do uh, with Frygate than what we are showing here. Basically, I just wanted to show you guys how we could at least get this thing installed and up and running. And then you can kind of take it from there and tweak it uh, for whatever you're wanting to do with your system. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to my spring merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're interested in VPN service, check out IP Vanish. I'll have a link in the description below. Uh, so that you can jump over to their website and see what deals they currently have running. And if you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, check out Robinhood. There's a link in the description below. And if you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.